Hey everyone, so in 1997, Deep Blue played Garry Kasparov, and I'll bring to you now Game 6, which was quite the epic. This was played in 1997, where Deep Blue was white, and Kasparov was black. And watch out for move 8, where Deep Blue played quite an epic move against Kasparov, who made a telling mistake. So, Deep Blue kicked off with 1e4, Kasparov decides to play the Karakan. He played c6, d4 was played... D5 from Kasparov, knight c3, takes, takes, and now knight d7. And here deep blue played knight to g5, gaining more activity for this knight. Knight g f6 was played by Kasparov, and bishop d3 from deep blue. Here e6 was played, knight 1 to f3, and here h6 was played by Kasparov, which is actually a mistake. People thought, was this a... A finger slip from Kasparov? Did he simply misplay the opening? Um, a rumour has it that Kasparov actually forgot the move order and played h6 here. And another theory goes that Kasparov thought Deep Blue wouldn't actually play the move that he played the next. Many other computer programmes have actually played this move, uh, but Gary thought Deep Blue would be following his own opening book and this move would not be in it. So amazingly here, White can actually play Knight takes e6 gaining a pawn and sacrificing the knight for a brilliant attack. So let's just have a look at this. So if the pawn captures the knight straight away, bishop g6 can be played with check and the king has only got one square, he's forced to go to e7. And if white castles gaining some development, we see the state of black's position already. So this rook is trapped. Black can no longer castle. This rook is trapped. This bishop is trapped in. This bishop is trapped in. And the only moves available to black are moving these two knights or a queen. So already black is in a bit of a state. So let's go through some moves. If um, knight b6 here, for instance, white can just go in with knight e5. And after queen d5 and b3, already white's building up an attack. He's threatening to play c4 and play bishop a3. If uh, black continues with c5, bishop a3 anyway pinning that pawn on c5 to the black king uh, and if black starts manoeuvring around c4 queen d6 and now something like knight f7 and this is well and truly over for black even though black is actually a piece up amazingly in this position another move could be played perhaps queen b6 and then just comes development bishop f4 we're going white's trying to attack the black king in the center with all the pieces so it doesn't really matter that black's a piece up because the pieces aren't actually doing anything. White's developed, got three pieces out, and he's ready to put the queen and the rooks into the game against his weak e6 pawn and the weak king. So if queen takes b2, c4, king d8. These are all moves recommended by the chess program Leela. So rook e1, bishop e7. These are technically the best moves. Rook takes e6. Knight f8 attacking both pieces and now comes this resource rook e2 attacking the queen queen c3 and plonking the bishop on f7 just a right fawn in black side and after g5 and d5 white is in a superior position because d takes c6 is coming with a queen attack this bishop stopping black from escaping it's just all over technically the best move in this position is queen c7 but even then, after rook e1, king d8, let's say, knight e5, threatening knight f7. Knight takes, pawn takes with check from the queen on d1. Knight d7 blocks it. And after bishop e3, c5, f4, support in the center, queen c6, bishop f2, maneuvering the bishop around, c4, bishop e4, and queen b5. White's got a4. After queen a5, king h1, white is much better. The pawn is weak on c4, as I've highlighted in a nice colour green. Um, e6 pawn is weak. The g7 pawn blocks the bishop, and if that bishop ever moves from f8, white could play queen g4, attacking it, and it's really hard to defend. If the move, if rook, the rook on h8 ever moves to the white squares, the bishop on e4 is just a monster. You can't play b6 because it's bishop as well, so these pieces are all trapped in. And even though black's a piece up, um, white's just got a superior advantage. So in the game, 
Kasparov didn't capture this knight straight away with it. F takes e6. He played queen to e7 first. So it's pinning that knight against the king. Deep blue castle in this position, and now he takes an e6 with the pawn. And as we've seen, bishop g6 can come. This time, though, the king can move to d8 rather than e7. But bishop f4 stops black escaping any further. And now we'll just look at some other candidate moves that black could play. He could play knight to e8, and if this happens, bishop g3 would come. And if knight d6, rook e1, knight f7, c4, and b6, and d5. And again, white's just crushing, opening this center up. The rook on e one's a monster and eyeing up this black queen. This bishop just rakes across the board and black's really struggling for development. The e6 pawn is absolutely terrible. If another move like knight h7, bishop g3 again, knight g5 let's say, and knight to e5 comes. Knight takes, d takes, and king c7. Maybe black might be escaping, but after f4 and knight f7, um, queen h5, the knight's got to move again to d8, and if and here Leela actually suggests saving move king moving king h1, saving the white king against uh, queen z5 check and just carry on the attack at a later date. So queen v4 and rook a d1. White's just building up this attack and and honestly white's just gonna build up an attack. Black's really not coordinated enough to deal with it. In the game, however, Kasparov decided to go for b5, trying to gain some sort of counter play and develop this bishop on c8. A4 was played by deep blue undermining this pawn. Kasparov plays bishop b7, developing his piece. Rook e1 now, attack, eyeing up this e6 pawn, it's very weak. And Kasparov played knight d5, attacking the bishop on f4. Bishop g3 though, maybe potentially playing bishop h4 at a later date. And for this reason, Kasparov played king c8 here. Another move that I was thinking of was just playing a6, trying to support this b5 pawn. It does block in the bishop though. But after bishop h4, knight f6, white can build up an attack with knight e5, maybe king c8, stopping knight f7 check. Bishop g3 though, h5, a takes, a takes, rook takes the rook, bishop takes, and now knight f7, white's plan simple, we're still attacking c6 pawn, move the queen to a1, potentially attacking the bishop, and getting the queen in. In the game, a6 wasn't played though, played king c8 by Kasparov, a takes b5, c takes b5, and queen d3 attacking the pawn, bishop c6, protect it, and now bishop f5 attacking the e6 pawn, and believe it or not, the best move here is actually what Kasparov played, he gave up the queen for two pieces, so e takes f5, rook takes the queen, and bishop takes the rook. Knight could also capture, after queen c3, king d8, getting off the pin, bishop d6, attacking the knight, and the queen still line up the bishop. Bishop e4, let's say, queen a5, king e8. White slowly is just taking off a few pawns, and his black's position is terrible. If we move like g5, we can play knight to e5, and black's well and truly busted. The rest of the moves are given are like knight c6, knight takes d7, king takes, and bishop e5. After rook g8, d5, black can resign. Let's face it, he's lost another piece, and this queen is just too mobile. In the game, after bishop takes c7 by Kasparov, c4 was played by deep blue, and Kasparov actually resigned the game. This is because after b takes, the queen can take it. And after knight b4, rook e1, attacking the bishop, the queen's still attacking b4. So after rook e8 to protect the bishop, Bishop d6 can be played, and the bishop sacking the knight, the queen sacking the knight, the bishop sacking the bishop, and if bishop takes d6, rook can capture on e8, and everything just collapses like a house of cards. So, after this move, h6, Kasparov actually lost the game to knight takes e6, and what a wonderful move by the computer. So, at the end, Kasparov actually lost the match against deep blue by two and a half points to three and a half and this was the first defeat from a world champion via a computer in a classical game and 20 years later we've seen the development of amazing software and computers that are absolutely annihilating human players at chess now and perhaps this match was the very beginning of uh, the absolute onslaught of computers in chess as Kasparov says he believes this was only a matter of time 
before computers would outthink humans at chess. I hope you enjoyed this six game series. Thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed all these videos and I'll bring more chess content to you soon. Thank you.